Hello, family. Hello, friends. I'm back with another part of Dr. Martin Luther King. Another one of my displays. It's not a very large Christmas display, just a sample. And I get these flowers after Christmas. That's the best time to get them. And you know I love to collect my glass pieces. So today we're going to talk about part of Dr. King's journey. And Dr. King was labeled a communist simply because he was trying to do something for the people. Whenever you're trying to do something good for the people, you're going to get labeled or you're going to get trampled. But your way will not be easy. So Dr. King, in the very early beginning, his biggest adversary was J. Edgar Hoover, who was a big dog at the time. And he made Dr. King's way very hard. Right up to the time when he gave his speech, or he tried, at the Lorraine Hotel. Dr. King was also very close to President Robert Kennedy and also his brother Bobby Kennedy. When he needed something, he could call them. When they needed something from them, they could call him. Now, the night that Dr. King went to the Lorraine Motel, it was raining and it was storming so bad. And he decided that he wanted to stay in his room because he was still writing his speech for the Poor People's March. But the people that were around him went back to his room and they insisted that the crowd was not there to see them. They had come to see Dr. King. Now, I really don't understand that because these people that were around him were supposed to be civil rights workers themselves. So something doesn't set right with me about why they were coaxing him so much to go to the balcony. So Dr. King put down his writings and he went to the balcony and then that was it. Now Dr. King, he had given plenty of interviews with the BBC News and NBC and uh, even the Merv Griffith Show. Uh, he had said many times that he could not live in a communist society. And he didn't believe anyone should have to live in a communist society. But uh, what I really want you to do, I've placed a light here. It's a little battery pack light. I want you to pull up Dick Gregory's old video. And Dick Gregory has a video and he explains and he shows it on screen. The people that were there with him when he did his speech at the balcony, the people that coaxed him, and then he's going to tell you a little bit more. So please look for that video. It's still on YouTube. Brother Dick Gregory had ran for president himself, and he had got quite a few numbers. They said he had won, but they said that they changed the numbers or something. So, and you listen to Dick Gregory tell you for himself. He'll tell you that he had the numbers. He, he had been everywhere, and he knew everybody.
So anyway, family, I'm going to let you listen to Dr. King in his own words why he opposed what he opposed. And also, I want him to uh, let you know that he wanted things for every race, everybody. He was for his people, but he wanted things for everyone. He wanted life to be better. It's probably why things went the way they did. I want to say to my supporters, um, Mrs. Sharp, Mrs. Taylor, the Mommy Miracle, thank you so much. And I want to ask any visitors, if you like my channel, would you subscribe? If you have a channel and you're under 100 subscribers, drop your channel's name. It's free. One thing I don't like is hit the cash app. Hit the cash app. I don't do that. So it's free. And just give a two-word description. You have a game channel. You have a DIY channel. Now, sometimes you leave it and it gets removed. But if I see you, I respond to you. Okay, family. I'm going to give a shout out to my husband, Alfonso. He was in the military in Germany. You know who you are. Love you. And I want to give a shout out to my second husband, Baltimore City officer. Know who you are. Love you dearly. Dr. King. Nor does the human spirit move without great difficulty against all the apathy of conformist thought within one's own bosom. There has never been such a monumental dissent during a war by the American people. Polls reveal that almost 15 million Americans explicitly oppose the war in Vietnam. Additional millions cannot bring themselves around to support it. This reveals that millions have chosen to move beyond the prophesying of smooth patriotism to the high grounds of firm dissent based upon the mandates of conscience and the reading of history. Now, of course, one of the difficulties in speaking out today grows out of the fact there are those who are seeking to equate dissent with disloyalty. It's a dark day in our nation when high-level authorities will seek to use every method to silence dissent. Something is happening and people are not going to be silent. The truth must be told, and I say that those who are seeking to make it appear that anyone who opposes the war in Vietnam is a fool or a traitor or an enemy of our soldiers is a person who has taken a stand against the best in our tradition. Many persons have questioned me about the wisdom of my past. Why are you speaking about the war, Dr. King? Why are you joining the voices of dissent? Peace and civil rights don't mix, they say. And so this morning I speak to you on this issue because I am determined to take the gospel seriously. There is at the outset a very obvious and almost facile connection between the war in Vietnam and the struggle I and others have been waging in America. A 
few years ago, there was a shining moment in that struggle. It seemed as if there was a real promise of hope for the poor, both black and white, through the poverty program. Then came the build-up in Vietnam, and I watched the program broken as if it was some idle political plaything of a society gone mad on war. And I knew that America would never invest the necessary funds or energies in rehabilitation of its poor, so long as adventures like Vietnam continue to draw men and skills and money like some demonic destructive suction tube. You may not know it, my friends, but it is estimated that we spend $500,000 to kill each enemy soldier, while we spend only $53 for each person classified as poor. And much of that $53 goes for salaries to people who are not poor. So I was increasingly compelled to see the war as an enemy of the poor and attack it as such. Perhaps a more tragic recognition of reality took place when it became clear to me that the war was doing far more than devastating the hopes of the poor at home. It was sending their sons and their brothers and their husbands to fight and die in extraordinarily high proportion relative to the rest of the population. We were taking the black young men who had been crippled by society and sending them 8,000 miles away to guarantee liberties in Southeast Asia, which they had not found. Thank you to News Non-Corporate News. Non-Corporate News for finding that speech of Dr. King. I will continue to look for Dr. King's work, people that worked against him. But please don't forget, look for brother, or you sometimes went by Baba Dick Gregory, who did work on all the big civil rights workers, people who who did things that shouldn't have done. He had been everywhere. He knew a lot. And I, I really think you want to see this video that I'm telling you about. And it's going to really be amazing. Because some of these people that were there with Dr. King at that time, and I'm not saying that Dr. King trusted them. He was no fool. He knew he was in danger. He had already said it. And I believe he knew who they were. But Doug, uh, Dick Gregory is going to, he's going to show you. They're going to say it out of their own mouths. All right. As I've said before, I have no connection to Dr. King's family. I am only started bringing this up because I heard a lot of people dragging him and knocking him. The more I learn, the more I respect him. Um, respect your elders, please. And, and let me say this. Keep your kids at home. Stop going to these events. Stop going to these concerts. Stop going to these games. It's getting to the point now where it is not safe. Keep your kids at home. Keep, your, keep them under your supervision. I don't care if they're 18 or 20. Look out for yourself. And another thing I want you to do, family and friends, is to make sure that you are constantly stocking your home. 
Make sure that you have the things that you need. You stock up on your food. Make sure you have your meds. Make sure that you have your paper goods. Make sure that you have things that if it's uh, you can't cook, you can still open a can. Get your can openers, hand can openers. Go back to Grandma's Day. Family, be safe and take care. And like I said, if you enjoy this channel, all I ask is that you subscribe. I don't ask for money. I love you guys. Take care. Oh, and one more thing. The last video I made, which was my favorite video of my DIY, I was told that it may be taken down. And that really hurts me. Someone is claiming my material. Okay, family, that's it. I'm gone. Love ya. Bye-bye. I will return.